it's time to let your mind just run free and roam like a climbing antelope through the mountains of your consciousness. Let it go. What would you like to be if for 24 hours you could be anything that ever existed in all of time and all of history? A person. How about Nero? Would you like to be Nero for one day and play your fiddle and cackle fiendishly <laughs> while Rome burns, eh? Or how would you like to be Julius Caesar, commanding all the armies of the great Roman Empire? Or how about Napoleon? What would you like to try just for one day? Oh, look at that. There's my role. I've plucked it right out of history. <laughs> a pre-Civil War plantation master and owner of a great southern plantation, old Massa himself. What a role. Old Massa out on a Sunday, riding Nellie, his 22-year-old mare, the two of them have been through so many things together. And in just two years, the two of them will go to war. But he will go to war because he's a Southerner. He will fight for his soil, but not slavery. But now, for this moment, old Massa is just out on a quiet Sunday, surveying his great, vast, ancestral home. And here's the old place itself. Uh, oh, yes, 30 years in the building. Those classical columns rising, the mockingbirds calling. Old Massa is spending a Sunday quietly at home. he is on that vast veranda enjoying a sparkling julep as twilight falls it's so peaceful here that you can just about hear your mind unraveling just the sound of a distant crow. Hear him? Mockingbird. Could smell the magnolias just drifting in over the porch. <laughs> but the only thing that reminds you that you're in the 20th century is an occasional jet flying over at 30,000 feet. We're right back in 1858, two years before the Civil War. It wasn't always peaceful here, you know. Not by a long shot. Right on this lawn, this beautiful green lawn with that sparkling white fence around it, about 120 some odd years ago, give or take four or five years each way, the third Pennsylvania Rifles from the north fought a pitched battle with General Hood's Confederate advance guard of the Atlanta Army. Right here. Some of them ducked behind those trees to get away from snipers. About a quarter of a mile down the road, you can still see what's left of few trenches where they dug in, tried to hold for a while, as that northern army was pushing in towards Atlanta, just 25 miles away. The thing that makes this plantation special, above all other plantations, is the writer, Margaret Mitchell, who is an Atlantan 
grew up in this area. She used this plantation, the Lovejoy Plantation, as the inspiration for 12 oaks <laughs> in Gone with the Wind. This is the real plantation. This is Ashley Wilkes' ancestral home right here. This is where Major Wilkes would come out in the evening just like I am. Have a mint julep. Maybe smoke a good cigar. Listen to the mockingbirds. God, as a kid, I identified with Ashley Wilkes. I was living in the steel mill district, and you'd smell nothing but the open hearth late at night. Now, here I am, where it all began. 120 some odd years before any of us were on this earth. Magnolias, there goes a butterfly by. Mockingbirds. Major Ashley Wilkes, may you rest in peace wherever you are. God, it's peaceful here. <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> oh, wait till you see the dinners they serve here at the Lovejoy Plantation. Come on in to dinner. Honey cured Georgia ham. Sliced so thin that you can almost read your Bible through those elegant slices. Candied peaches, what else? <laughs> and it's only the beginning. Only the beginning, folks. You ain't seen nothing yet. Fried chicken. Young pullets hissing with an aroma that brings tears to a stone elephant. tell you that America does not have regional cuisine to be proud of. Garden salad with a touch of mint aspic and biscuits. The biscuit was invented in Georgia, friends. All others are mere fakes and imitations. And the Georgia peach. A magnificent, beautiful, subtle, right out of the Garden of Eden itself about to become homemade Georgia fresh peach ice cream. So cold, the faint mist rises from it. And what is life without the classical mint julep? The mint julep, by the way, is made over a 48-hour period. 12-year-old bourbon is frozen with two crushed sprigs of mint in it and some sorghum sugar and then finally pour it over crushed ice two days later and that old wild turkey sings a song that goes right to the soul ah oh, what a biscuit say hey, listen would you like to meet a friend of ours here on the plantation while i sit back and enjoy this uh, fantastic meal here on a quiet Sunday afternoon in the very chair that Major Wilkes probably sat in just before the Civil War. How'd you like to meet a, a real f special friend here on the plantation? Okay? Betty? Yeah? You think Billy's around? Yeah, he's probably at the barn, but he's around. <laughs> the barn, where else? All right, give him a call, Betty, Ms. Betty. Let's show him to the folks. himself out surveying his ancestral acres, testing the soil, tasting it, smelling it, feeling it. 
The old colonel's a loner. Not many of his fellow plantation owners like him because he's against slavery. One of the rare plantation owners who stands on the other side of the big issue of his day. He has sharecroppers. Slavery is anathema to the colonel. But he is a southerner. And he will go to war for his section of the country. Just two years later, Massa will be in the gray riding Nellie to war. He feels it in the air today, but he's savoring the last few moments of peace. Cotton. It's what built our empire down here, folks. Southern Georgia cotton. We have a few acres of peanuts, ground nuts, we call them. Nice little cash crop. And the soil. Feels good on a hot Sunday. Just to feel it crushing under your feet. a stroll into town see how my friends are doing old Colonel Willoughby's house he's about to pass on leaving it to his daughter Phoebe ah the old shorter mansion John Gill Shorter, governor, back in the Civil War days, 1861 through 63. Man who knew how to live. You know, the Shorters came here to Alabama back in 1836 when the Indians were just leaving. They brought another kind of life. Governor Shorter was famous for the parties and balls he'd throw just before the war. His gardens were legendary. things from all over the world to build his his own quiet spot of land China from the finest houses of England Venetian mirrors carvings from Italy blown glass from Brussels Make lake you fall a punch. How do you do that? It's my, re it's my recipe, really. You squeeze the juice of 12 lemons. Yeah. A cup of honey. Yeah. And a fifth of gin. Fifth of gin. Yeah. And you put it in a churn. Now, I mean, oh, you might say quark, quark, but we say churn, don't we? I know what you mean, a buckety, buckety, buck. Put it in a churn with the rinds and let it set overnight. The fifth of gin. I told you that, didn't I? Now, that's the most important part. Yes. Well, then, the next morning, you strain all this off. You get a fifth and a half. And you serve it in little old-fashioned glasses with crushed ice. And it'll kick you like six views. <laughs> that's about as good as uh, learning how to eat a possum. Potatoes? And how to protect... No. No taters? No, take a... Uh, and a possum, of course, really the word is possum, not opossum. No, it's possum. Right. I wouldn't go possum hunting with a man that said opossum. No, no, that ain't country enough. What you do, you take the possum and you clean it as best you can. Take a real fine, fat, fine shingle, put the possum on the shingle and grease it down and butter it good. Put it in the oven at about 450 degrees. 
cook it for about an hour and 20 minutes, then take it out, throw the possum away, and eat the shingle. <laughs> I know it, I know it. You're at a peanut boil. In you fall up. You can't get any more southern than that. And there are those crisp roasted peanuts and those biscuits. Squash pie. Plenty of nutmeg. That old river, that old Devil River is just flowing down right off the bank where we're enjoying this peanut boy. Boiled peanuts, an acquired taste, decidedly. Breezes blow. Everywhere you look down south, that old Spanish moss just hangs down. South is a land of churches. Generation after generation, they pass the shape songs down. And outside of every church is a little graveyard. They're still part of the congregation. down the road where the spider waits for the fly the bees hum and the birds quietly twitter the soft breezes blow the shorter family graveyard Thomas Wolfe's angel looks down over all the departed shorters, forever stone. Pre-Civil War walls, bits of classical Greek column covered with vines. And the sad angel notes the passing of mankind Many died young in those days. In the seventh year of his life, 1834, 1840. And here's William James, 1826, 1839. They often died young in those days. Diphtheria, whooping cough, the croup, and just because they were young.
Johnny Reb, with his flintlock, looks down on it all with his memories of Manassas. Bull Run. Wonder what he thinks of Colonel Sanders and his chicken. Have two, they're dark brown and chocolate too. Suits me, they must suit you, cause that's what I like about sour. Away, way down where the cane grows tall, down where they say you all walk on in with that southern drawl, cause that's what I like about the south. It's down where they have those pretty queens keep a dreaming, those dreamy dreams will let sip that absent in New Orleans, that's what I like about the south. Come old Bob with all the news, got the box back coat and the button shoes, but he's all caught up with his union dues, and that's what I like about the South. Here come old Roy down the street, who oh, can't you hear those scuffling feet? He would rather sleep than eat, and then that's what I like about the South. She's got backbones and butter beans, ham, hocks, and turnip greens, you and me in New Orleans, and that's what I like about the South. overhead and the same sun burns down over it all the colonel's had a good Sunday like thousands of Sundays before it, peaceful just before the Great War broke out. Me and Nellie, we've been walking these same trails now for 20 years together. She's a good old gal. She knows every inch of the plantation. Old friends together. Out for a bit of air. Those big eyes have seen it all. And that red clay road of old Georgia laces it all together. It feels so good under foot. Let's go visit the biggest plantation of them all, Nellie. Show the folks what it really was like. The gates of Greenwood. A tip of the Panama hat for the most magnificent plantation of the Old South. Greenwood, 16,000 acres of the choicest virgin Georgia land, snow white, with its symbolic hand-carved magnolia, the magnolia of the Old South. And all of that life changed suddenly, abruptly. Teenagers from north, teenagers from south, met on the battlefields. Antietam, Bull Run, Gettysburg. More young men died in one day at Antietam than the entire Vietnam War. But that's two years from now, Nelly. We'll join the cavalry, Nelly. You and me. 
We won't survive, but I'll be a colonel and you'll be a horse. Maybe it's better that way. And Colonel Beauregard Shepard rides slowly off into history. There'll never be another like him. Celebrate the joys and sorrows of growing older on Taking My Turn, starring Margaret Whiting and Marnie Nixon, Friday night at 9. 